The latest trend in the world of AI is MCP, Model Context Protocol. If it sounds boring or complicated, don't worry, it's a very simple and effective tool that will help you build better AI agents from scratch. Hi everyone, I'm Ishan Sharma and in this video, you'll learn about what is MCP, why does MCP matter and how can you build your own MCP agents from scratch. I'll show you a couple of ways to do that. Watch till the end, there's a lot to learn from here. Before we talk about MCP and what it really is, let's first understand how do AI agents operate. Behind the scenes, basically an AI agent has a thing thinking model has a reasoning model which is hooked onto a tool and this combination of a thinking reasoning model with a tool is what builds a AI agent from scratch. So your model can basically create a list of things to execute on and then start executing it using the access of tools that it has. Now in most cases creating this connection between your thinking model, your LLM could be Gemini, could be DeepSea, could be ChatGPT, could be any other one and linking it with a tool is oftentimes complicated and takes a lot lot of time and effort but thankfully with the help of MCP servers you can do it very easily and it has become a standardized way for you to interact with tools and build agents at scale. Let me show you how it really works. So model context protocol was recently launched by Anthropic and if you will go read here Today, we are open sourcing Model Context Protocol, a new standard for connecting AI assistants to the systems where data lives, including content repositories, business tools, and development environments. It sounds very complicated, but essentially it helps you to connect with local databases or remote servers, which could basically be any API that you would want to use. Let's go back and look at the Model Context Protocol website. So this is modelcontextprotocol.io slash introduction. So it explains that Model Context Protocol is an open protocol that standardizes how applications provide context to LMs. Think of MCP like a USB-C port for all AI applications. Basically, MCP is a standardized way for any LLM model to communicate with any tool. Now this tool could either be a local database or it could also be any API or any remote server that it is going to connect with via a MCP server. That's the basic idea of MCPs. Now, as you will see, just as a USB-C provides a standardized way to connect your devices to various peripherals and accessories, MCP provides a standardized way to connect AI models to different data sources and tools. So, now you would ask, why do MCPs really matter? A growing list of pre-built integrations that your LLM can directly plug into. Well, previously you were using these APIs with your LLM separately and making each connection one by one. You can actually just plug and play using MCPs. So that is the best part about it. The flexibility to switch between LLM providers and vendors. Best practices for securing your data within your infrastructure. I think this is the best part about it. It is basically an open standard for communicating between a LLM and a tool. So if you will go over here, the general architecture of it looks basically like this. So you have an MCP client, which could be Claude, it could be any IDE, it could also be any model. And now this communicates with either a local data source or a remote server, which could basically be web APIs via a MCP server. So you're basically talking to this MCP server and it is making it much easier for you to communicate with any tool and execute anything that you want to. For example, let's say you want to have an AI agent which can order stuff for you from Amazon. Now previously you would have to build every single action from scratch. For example, opening Amazon or logging into Amazon or adding something to cart in Amazon. Now these are separate functions which you would have to build for from scratch. But thankfully imagine having an MCP which can just communicate with your LLM and do all the things without having to do it one by one. That is the power of MCP. Now, if you go down over here, you have definitions of what are clients, what are servers, what are data sources, what are remote services. But ideally, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to build AI agents which can scale and are effective. There is also a GitHub repository for MCP. So you can scroll down and you can basically view all the SDKs they have available. But you can also just go to the servers part of it and see all the servers that you can currently use. So for example, they have access to Brave Search, enabling your LLM to search the web in real time using the Brave Search API just by using the simple Brave Search MCP. If you go down, you have access to Git and GitHub. So imagine being able to access GitHub and do all the actions without having to actually go on GitHub yourself. You can do all of that by having a GitHub MCP available for you. But keep in mind that because MCPs are open source and anyone can create any MCP they want, it can also be risky. So 
all you have to do is to go to smithery smithery ai is a popular repository of all the current mcps that you can access so you can go in the featured section and you can see all the most popular mcps which are going to be safe to use and are useful as well so for example if you go on sequential thinking it will talk about what this mcp does implements provides a tool for dynamic and reflective problem solving through a structured thinking process that's one mcp that you can access to again the github mcp which i just told you about with which you can create or update any file in your repository you can search a repository you can create a repository and you can get file contents that is how it works previously you would have to build these functionalities step by step one by one what else do we have we also have other ones like magic mcp you have brave search you also have browser base and many other functionalities that you can attach with your ai agent now let me show you how to build a simple mcp server and use it with your ai agent from scratch there are two ways to do it and we will come to each of these the first and the most easiest way to do it is by using Pline. so i'll basically go to visual studio code and you can access this by downloading visual studio code on your laptop and once you do that you can go to extensions and search Klein. Once you install Visual Studio Code, you can search for Klein and you can install Klein for you. Klein is again an AI coding assistant that can help you just code anything that you would want. We'll click on Klein and we'll basically click on use your own API key. So basically, Klein is a functionality that will require an LLM with which it can create any code that you would want it to. Now we can enter an API provider over here, which could either be open router or it could be Anthropic, it could be OpenAI, it could be Google Gemini, it could be DeepSeek. But for today's video, let's just go with, let's say Google Gemini. Now the fun fact is you can use Gemini API key for completely free. Just go to aistudio.google.com and click on get API key. And you can create an API key right here. And let's just go with Gemini API, create it right here. You can basically just paste it over here and click on let's go. So now, Klein is going to be able to run because you've entered the Gemini API key. So this is good. Now, if you go on this MCP servers icon over here, you can now search any MCP that you want and you can install it right into Klein. And Klein be, will be able to run it because it has access to Gemini. So I can basically just say, um, let's just take an example of, let's just go down and see what do we have. You have Blender MCP, you have access to Solana, you have access to email sender, you have magic UI, you have SendGrid, you have Firecrawl, you have all of these Airtable, Git tools. There's so much that you can actually build from scratch with the help of these agents. Let's say, for example, I want to use, let's see, let's say I want to use a Google Calendar API. So I can basically just click on installing. Now the last step in creating this MCP is to basically go to Google Cloud Console and get my calendar API. If I will put this API into this system, then I'll be able to run this and I can access any of my events from my Google Calendar right into my AI agent. And then I can just ask my agent that, hey, what is the events for the day? or create an event for my day and it would be able to create that event because it has access to the Google Calendar API. What else can you do? You can also just go and search for perplexity research and you can install this agent, this MCP and I'll just run command. And basically you will now have access to live search, web search. I'll just click on proceed while running. And once this is done, we can basically ask any question to Gemini and it will be able to take the advantage of the live search feature of the perplexity MCP that we have created and it will be able to run really quickly. This is honestly the easiest way to set up our MCP server like I've just shown you over here and they have a huge list of servers that you can search from, you can install it, you can build your own MCP server and build AI agents effectively. This is the first way to actually build it. The second way is by using cursor. So if I am on cursor, cursor is basically an AI IDE, basically enabling you to write code with the help of AI. So I will download this. And once you've downloaded it, you can basically open cursor. And let's try to create a simple MCP agent with it. So I've made a simple folder called as MCP agents. And what I will do is I will basically go to Smithery and I can browse through 
this entire list of all of their MCPs. Let's say I want to install sequential thinking as my MCP. So I can basically just go to the cursor installation part and I can grab this JSON. Now, this is basically the command that it will be running to start executing the sequential thinking MCP. I will then go to cursor. I can then go on to the settings part of it. Let me just make it bigger. Go to settings and I'm using the free version. Let's make it a little zoomed out. Go to MCP, click on add new global MCP server. And now we have a mcp.json file created for us in this path. Now I just have to paste this if I want to install it globally, right? So now I can save this and this is a ready to use server for us. And you can see that this is a live MCP server. So the green light is there. So the tool it has is sequential thinking. How does it work? So basically a detailed tool for dynamic and effective problem solving through thoughts. This tool helps analyze problems through a flexible thinking process that can adapt and evolve. Basically, it's like, it's like a thinking model of its own. It's enabled and you can start using it. And for example, if you want to test out this simple MCP, you can just type that using the sequential thinking MCP, I want to create a full-fledged streaming platform, outline the steps involved in executing this and how can I go about building it step by step. Press on enter and then it will take help of this MCP and build out the thing for you from scratch. It's going to call the MCP tool, sequential thinking, and now we'll get the reply from this. It called the tool. It takes a little while because it's a free tool and doesn't require an API, the API key. So it will take some time, but you'll get the answer for it. Let's actually look at the other things you can also do. In the meantime, you can also try to set up a GitHub MCP if you want to. So all you have to do for that is to go on to cursor and you will need a GitHub personal access token. So this is going to be another API key. So you basically go on your GitHub, you go on to GitHub, go to your settings, and over here you can go to passwords and authentication and over here or actually you just need to go to developer settings you need to go to personal access tokens click on fine grain tokens and try to generate a new token you enter your password press enter and you can basically just call it uh, mcp demo for 30 days all repositories this applies to all the current depositories and you need to actually give permissions for everything. So depending on what you're comfortable with, you can give permissions for read and write, read only, read only. And once you, you're done with all of this, you can basically just click on generate token. And you would now have this token with you, which you can basically go on to, go on to GitHub. And now you can just go on to Smithery. You can paste this person access token. You can click on connect. And now you would have access to this JSON that you can just copy. And while we were working on the GitHub MCP, this sequential thinking MCP got back to us with a response, creating an in-depth plan for building a streaming platform from scratch. So as you can see, it's a very in-depth sequential answer. And if you want to build another MCP, you can just go over here. Let's say you want to remove this. We can add our GitHub with our personal access token. And then we can save this. And as you can see, now you have access to GitHub. And you can do all of this. You can create or update file. You can search repositories. You can do so much over here. Let's say, for example, I want to use this GitHub MCP. So I can basically just say, using the GitHub MCP, create a report title, new MCP agent, and add a readme about MCP agents and how to build them. And now I can basically just click on enter. And now it would basically use this GitHub MCP and the personal access token that I have to create this repository from scratch. Now, if we change the permissions, we should be able to create or update files, but this is basically an example of how to create MCP agents from scratch. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think of it? I just love the options that you have. Like if you just go on to Smithery, you can basically have hundreds, if not thousands of MCP agents at your fingertips and you can build practically anything that you would want. Even on client, you have access to so many MCP servers. It makes it very easy for you to just plug and play. Just use the Gemini key and you can build anything that you would want. 
also what you could do is you can basically just go and change it to open router on client and you can make a simple free account on open router in which you can basically just paste your open router key i'll just sign in with google and i can create a key right here and just call it mcp agents and i will create it i'll paste this right here and now i can basically search for any of these models right here so i'll just search for free and now i have access to all of these free models that open router just provides me for free so i have quen i have deepseek and i have google gemma 2 gemma 3 and we have all of these free models that we can access all because of open router so just click on this and i can now start using google gemma 3 if i want to or i can also just basically use deepseek for example and click on done and now all of my requests will be handled by the free model of deepseek which is used via open router there's so much you can do you just need to focus on what you want to build this is a very exciting space every day there's new excitement and new updates happening so make sure that you subscribe to this channel there will be a lot more videos on how to build ai agent from scratch i am partnering up with a lot of interesting companies to come up with some amazing content on how to build these agents from scratch so stay tuned for that hit the like button let me know what you think of it in the description or in the comments of the video i'll see you in the next one